This demo refers to testing and controlling for endogeneity. So let's consider this model, which I'm going to increase in size. So we have a model here with four variables. And we do have in model endogeneity here. Um, assuming that this is the correct population model, as you can see, there is variation from B that ends up in C indirectly through D. And this coefficient, as well as this one here, they are calculated through ordinary least squares regression. And they do not take into consideration the fact that variation from B ends up in C. Since this variation from B ends up in C through D, you end up having this variation here that is part of C um, uh, being correlated with D. So, and this is a problem of endogeneity. So, what ends up happening is that these, uh, these two coefficients here, this 0.20 and 0.64, they, um, they are distorted, they are biased, but typically endogeneity is um, played up too much. It's, it's normally not a big issue, as we're going to see in this demo. So in order to uh, test for and control for endogeneity in model endogeneity caused by B having an indirect effect with C, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, uh, in, an instrumental variable, and I'm going to make this instrumental variable point at C. Now, if you just create a link between B and C, uh, there is a problem, um, or there are a couple of problems. One of the problems is that you end up factoring out the entire variation uh, of B. Uh, and not only the variation that ends up in C via D. The other problem is that there is no direct link between B and C at the population level. So you're going to be creating a link that doesn't exist. And this can lead to a type 1 error because these two variables, B and C, are correlated exactly because indirectly there is variation going from B that ends up in C. But there is no link. This link here is zero at the population level. So if you add a link that doesn't exist and there is expectation that the two variables are, um, are, are correlated, then you may end up with a false positive, a type 1 error. Okay, so let's test and control for endogeneity. I'll close from out of here. I'll go to the option Explore, Analytic Composites, and Instrumental Variables. Here I'll choose the option Instrumental Variable, and I'll, I'll keep this option here, Single Stochastic Variation Sharing. And I will create an Instrumental Variable for C. So I'll click on C. And the instrument will be the instrument will be B, which is the variable for which variation ends up in C. So the instrument will be B, the latent variable B. So as we can see, we have an association between B and C, and it, it does in, it is in fact significant. Well, the, the, the reason why it's, uh, the, the p-value is so low is because this, there is a large sample. The, this, the sample size here is quite large. So, but there is an association. So creating a direct link between B and C would likely lead to a false positive. Um, and that link doesn't exist at the, um, at the population level. So I'm going to click on Yes to create this instrumental variable. I'll click on Create. Software will tell me that this, uh, this new variable will be uh, stored into this data set as a, st as a new standardized indicator. I will close out of here, and now I'm going to go 
to my model creation, I will create a new latent variable, which will have that indicator. And I'll just call it simply IC, an instrumental variable for C. I will create a direct link between IC and C. This link will allow me to test whether there is significant endogeneity. And it will also allow me to control for endogeneity. I'll perform my analysis. So um, this, so this link, there is some variation here, as we can see. But this link allows me to control for endogeneity, in model endogeneity, caused by variation that ends up in B and that uh, influences C, and that was not being considered in a um, um, ordinary least squares analysis, which is what's normally done in path analysis. The question that comes now is whether this, uh, the endogeneity is significant. So to test this, I'm going to go to view and safe analysis results. Take a look at the path coefficients and p-values. In this path coefficient here refers to the endogeneity, in model endogeneity, with respect to the endogenous variable C in the model. So, so this is the coefficient that uh, refers to this link here. Since I have uh, just two decimals, it appears here as 0 0.01. It's in fact lower than that. And as we can see here, the p-value is non-significant. So my conclusion is that there is no significant endogeneity. But I'm controlling for that minimal endogeneity that um, uh, occurs. I, since the endogeneity is not significant, uh, arguably I would not have to have this instrumental variable added to the model. Um, one final note, a point that I would like to make is that this particular variation that is accounted for by this link is in fact um, a, a um, a variation contained in the um, structural error for this variable, which is not considered in a ordinary least squares regression without the inclusion of an instrumental variable. So the fact that we have some variation here coming from this instrumental variable to the, the uh, endogenous uh, variable C essentially tells me that the structural error associated with C is correlated with the predictors, uh, or at least with one of the predictors in this model, which is D. So this concludes this demo on test and controlling for endogeneity.